Hey everybody, this is Cruise Man, and it's Easter Sunday. Going out for a little Easter afternoon ride. Girlfriend left town this morning to go over to spend a couple of weeks with her mother, so I'm on my own for a couple of weeks. So I thought I would have a chance to get the bike out on the highway, try out some of these new accessories I've recently installed, tell you a little bit about them. I'm also trying out a new GoPro rig. This is about the fourth or fifth time I've tried this and I have not had much luck getting it to work. And basically what it is, is a Cena Bluetooth backpack paired with my Cena 20S headset. And of course it's on a GoPro Hero Silver, Hero 4 Silver. And I've had all kinds of problems. So I don't know if this video is even going to turn out. One issue I've been having is the GoPro just freezing and locking up. And it goes for about 8 or 10 seconds and then it freezes up. And of course you don't know this until you get back to the house and realize you've been talking to yourself, you know, for the last 45 minutes when you're trying to do a motor vlog. And the other issue I've had is a lot of popping and clicking in the audio on the GoPro. And everything I've been able to find on that issue, and both these issues, has to do with the Bluetooth backpack. I've never had my GoPro freeze up, and I've never had any problems with the audio on the GoPro until I put on this Cena Bluetooth backpack. So take that for what it's worth. So if it works today, great. I'm also trying out this 1080p super view mode to see how that works. And let me know if you like it. It gives a little bit wider angle, a little more vertical angle as well. And I'll just be curious what you guys think. I do read every comment that you post on my videos. And for all of those who have recently subscribed to my channel, thank you very much. Much appreciated. I've got a goal. I want to get to 10,000 subscribers. So if you haven't subscribed, please do and tell your friends or share these videos with your friends. Hopefully they'll like them. Now you'll notice, I don't know if you can see it on my dash, my trunk is open. Even though I closed it, it shows the trunk is open. It's got that little icon. So what I have to do is turn and reach with my other hand, my left hand, and just kind of push on it. And that closes the trunk. As you can see, the light went out. It's a little trick I learned. One little thing I'm getting used to on this 2018 Goldwing is the location of the horn button. I still haven't gotten used to it because it's kind of the turn signal button and the the uh, downshift paddle is kind of in the same location as the old horn button and kind of where you expect a horn button to be so this horn button is up a little higher and i i miss it every time but i'm getting used to it i really love the dct transmission um, got about 850 miles on the bike now. I did my first oil change yesterday. That went relatively uh, smooth. It is a little bit different than the previous Goldwing. Takes a little bit more, takes a few more steps. You've got three drain plugs on a DCT as opposed to one on the previous Goldwing. Oil filter is basically the same, except it's in a little bit easier location to get to. And of course, on the DCT, you now have a clutch filter. That's exciting. So I did all that, changed all the filters. Now, since I did my last or my first motor vlog, which was also my last motor vlog, I've installed a few accessories and I want to talk about them. The first thing I'm going to talk about, because it's kind of hit me right in the face, is this taller Honda windshield that I got from CycleMax.com. Now, this comes from Honda. It's about, I'd say, four inches taller than the stock 
windshield on the Goldwing Tour. And I have it now uh, probably about two inches, raised up about two inches. I'll lower it so you can see. This is all the way down. And with it all the way down, I do get a little bit of buffeting on my helmet. Now when this windshield is all the way down, it's almost as high as the stock windshield, not quite. But I'm gonna raise it up a couple inches and when I do, the buffeting goes away. I can still see over the windshield, I'm six foot two. If I raise it all the way up, I'd be looking through the windshield. And this is raised all the way up. Now I'm looking through the windshield, but interestingly, the buffeting is no different with it all the way up than it is when I'm just looking over the windshield. So I like to keep it down about right here. That way I can see over the windscreen. And I'm loving this electric windshield. If you've never ridden with one, you will get spoiled. So I would say if you're six foot one or taller, depending on your inseam, you're probably going to want to consider this tall windshield because it will make a difference. Now, I don't know how much difference it will make for the passenger. It's possible that raising it up all the way will create a little less buffeting on the passenger. But I think it's a good investment. I think I'm going to enjoy it. I'm anxious to see how it performs in rain as well. Now, I also have installed these upper air deflectors from CycleMax.com, and these are also Honda accessories. And uh, if you check my YouTube channel, you'll see the installation video out there. Now these do, I've had a lot of people actually put comments in asking me to review these products. So that's kind of what these moto vlogs are for. I have a chance to actually get out and ride the bike with these things installed. And I can kind of give you my impression, tell you what I think. The upper air deflectors do a pretty good job. They do block a lot of the wind off of your hands and off your arms and off actually the lower arm and the kind of the midsection of your body. But you still get a fair amount of air coming over the tops of your hands and up the tops of your arms through this little channel right here. If you can see that where I'm pointing, it's just like a little wind tunnel and air just comes right through there and up your arms and on the top of your hands. So until somebody comes out with a little wider, one of these little uh, plastic winglets to maybe block some of that wind, I, know, I think it's the only thing that's gonna mitigate that issue, but it can certainly be solved. And a wider windscreen would probably help keep some of the wind off the body as well. But this windscreen is a little bit wider than the stock windshield, but not significant. I'd say maybe an inch wider. And I think you'll see, hopefully, you'll see F4 or V-Stream or some of these other companies come out with some wider windscreens. I think it all depends on if this uh, electronic mechanism can handle the additional load. Because as you increase the surface area of that windscreen, you're also increasing the amount of pressure and load against that mechanism. And so I'm sure there's just going to have to be some testing to see how much it can handle. Something just kind of blingy and more for looks than anything are these uh, wheel stripes from Honda. And they come in red or silver. I opted for the red because I figured if I put the silver ones on, you wouldn't be able to see them because I have silver wheels. Now, if you have the uh, blacked out wheels, the silver might look really nice. Red would look good, too. They're I'd say relatively easy to install. They do take some patience because, you know, if you screw them up, you're, you're just out the money for a set of decals, basically. But I think they look okay. I, I could live with them or live without them. I'm not a bling guy. I was hoping that they would be reflective, and they're not. I was a little disappointed. I think Honda kind of missed the boat there. I think if these had been reflective, it would have been a safety item and a lot more people would buy them. But since they're not reflective, I could either take them or leave them. But I think it's just a matter of personal taste. If you like the looks of them, great. If not, great. Probably take you an hour to an hour and a half to install them if you do it on the center stand at home. 
Now, I also installed this passenger audio control. And my girlfriend and I went for a ride last weekend where we rode two up for the first time and we had a chance to try out the Cena intercom and she tried out this passenger audio control which mounts on top of the right saddlebag. And I'm not really sure I understand what the purpose of this accessory is. It, um, when she would change the source, it changed the source for both of us. And if she changed the volume, it would change the volume for both of us. And I guess I was under the impression that it was going to allow her to listen to a different source of music. Like I could listen to XM and she could listen to FM at the same time. Well, apparently that's not the case unless I'm doing something wrong. There's no documentation and there's no real description of what the item is designed to do, of what it's supposed to do. So it's a little bit confusing. It's not an inexpensive accessory. I don't know that we'll actually use it since we are going to be listening to the same thing anyway. I'm not really sure what the purpose of it is other than it allows your passenger to take control of the audio system. But I can't see why with two Bluetooth channels on this Goldwing, why they couldn't have had that control, that second channel, and at least have it where she could listen to uh, her own USB thumb drive or something like that. And again, I haven't found any documentation on it, I don't know how it's really supposed to work, so maybe there's something I'm missing. If, if you have one installed and you've been able to use it and get it to do something else, please put your comments down below and we'll try it out. One of my favorite accessories that I've added just recently is the um, backrest from Utopia. I'll tell you what, this backrest from Utopia makes all the difference in the world with this 2018 Goldwing C. It makes it tolerable. You know, I've had a Utopia backrest on my last two Goldwings, and I guess I've just gotten spoiled. And I was starting to think that I just hated this new Goldwing seat. But now that I've got the Utopia backrest installed, I think I'm going to like this seat. I think it's actually going to be okay. The Utopia backrest is, number one, is much easier to install on the 2018 than it was on the 2012. You no longer have to use a kitchen knife to cut a hole in your seat, which is kind of a scary thing. Uh, this thing goes right in. It's beautifully designed, well engineered, very strong. And I'll tell you what, it's much more substantial looking than the one that comes from Honda. It's also a little less expensive. I like it because it folds flat forward so your passenger can easily get on and off the bike. And it's fully adjustable. You can adjust it up or down to fit your back the way you want it. I just think it's an excellent product and one that if you do any serious touring, multi-hour trips on the bike, you're going to want a Utopia backrest, as simple as that. So I've had the bike now, this 2018, for exactly a month. Just a little over, one day over a month. I, I bought it March 1st, and it's Easter, it's April 1st right now. The more I ride it, the more I like it. It's not a previous generation Goldwing. That's the hardest thing to come to grips with. If you buy this bike, and you're coming off of a 2001 to 2017 Goldwing and you're expecting this to be like that bike, it's not. But I'll tell you what I do like. I like that it's smaller and lighter. It's much more nimble. It's easier to turn. It's easier to handle. It's easier to get up on the center stand. It's just, it's just a more approachable bike. I've arrived at my destination. This is the end of my second motor vlog. I hope you enjoy it. Again, please subscribe and leave your comments below. And this is Cruise Man signing off. Happy Easter, everybody.